Hi everyone, uh, Jacob here from GoodUI. And in this little video, I wanted to share with you how we prioritize our uh, testing ideas, our optimization ideas. Typically when we start engaging on an optimization project, uh, idealists tend to grow pretty quickly. Everyone has a say, everyone has a thought of what to uh, what can be done, what can be optimized. And it's, it's quite common that ideas grow to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus um, ideas. And then the problem begins, okay, what do we optimize first so that we can, one, increase our chances of winning. We actually, this leads to, to positive outcomes and that we, we don't just random, test random stuff. Uh, two, we increase our um, effect potential. So we actually, when we prioritize tests that have the most, uh, the highest possible wins. And third, um, what are some of the kind of effort that we need to, what, what's the effort that we need to dedicate to um, uh, to some of these ideas? So uh, another strategy could be, let's test the easiest things first. Um, and seeing kind of these, these characteristics interplay in, in some sort of uh, visible, clearly visible, sortable format, uh, that's why we kind of, that's why we do this exercise. And here I'm showing you an example of something we're starting, we're working with Up2Work, which is a resume builder site. And I just have a couple ideas here listed and I wanted to talk to uh, talk through this to give you a sense of, uh, yeah, how we, how we kind of go about doing this um, with the intent of, again, increasing our chances of, of winning. One key thing that's kind of unique to this uh, this framework is that we do base this uh, this prioritization, it's, it's, totally, it's largely based on past data, uh, hence this little evidence column here. Um, the more something repeats, the more an idea repeats, uh, the more strength it has, the more evidence we have uh, from more tests, the higher this number. And the higher this number, the uh, our certainty essentially goes up here. Okay, and those can that's that's one way we uh, we separate these ideas out. Um, but let me step back and kind of go column by column of how things um, uh, how we look at ideas. So first thing in the one in the left hand side column on the left column here we have idea titles. We try to keep them short so that they're memorable. We can reference them. Uh, here's a handful: what it's worth, benefit headlines, social counts. Uh, name first, return to complete. Uh, these are, yeah, these are titles. Primary metric is the, uh, yeah, as the column me as states, is the thing that we're measuring, uh, that will be, the, 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 that's the goal for that particular test. So here I have signups, it could be revenue, could be sales, could be ads to card, could be um, other steps within a funnel. Um, if we have multiple metrics on a particular project that are valuable, we could express them here. Description goes a little bit into a bit, a bit more detail um, of what that idea really is. Uh, occasionally, we might also do uh, drop idea references in here, which are then referenced in a, there's some sort of visual supporting that, um, that idea. Sometimes words are not enough. Uh, visualizations or sketches, wireframes can uh, can really clarify an idea. So that's where these descriptions go in here. Uh, scope is typically where the test starts. That's kind of an entry level uh, starting point for that test. So here we have pricing pages, a home page, home with uh, in parenthesis, uh, here we have a particular segment, unfinished resume flow. So maybe it's not just the, uh, it's not just the uh, anyone who visits uh, home, but someone who has in the past, uh, let's say, started a resume and and hasn't really finished, and they're returning. Okay, so we can have little segments here as well. Here, I'm still a little bit undecided whether the scope pertains to home or a particular. A deeper page, let's say there is a may builder. So maybe there could be multiple entry levels. Okay. Author, uh, this is uh, right now, is, it's, it's just my name here. But essentially, the point of this is um, if someone doesn't really understand, let's say there's multiple people, this is the person to, uh, to bug, to, uh, to ask 
for clarification what this what they in intended with this okay test is once a test is turned live or is active it could be tracked here so whatever someone has a whichever kind of naming test uh, syntax they have um, this could be um, filled out for um, to refer to particular tests links to optimize the link to VWO so um, that's the that column effort Typically measured in days. I know that people uh, express effort in so many different ways. It could be hourly, it could be, uh, yeah, there's different um, categorizations. We do it in days. Um, here's a, there's a quarter day, so you can see some of these ideas are super easy. They could be inline changes, text changes, hence a quarter point. Uh, other ideas we're guessing could take multiple days. Effect is where we hold ourselves accountable and we actually, um, uh, we track our results. So obviously here in these other columns, these kind of core columns on the right-hand side, we predict what's going to happen. Um, here we like to capture uh, once a test is actually run and has results. It's always nice to see have we made our guesses, uh, were those guesses right or wrong? And that's where we fill in this uh, effect size here. Estimated effect is our guess. Sometimes we leave it open. Sometimes we don't guess. If we don't have anything to guess with, we leave it blank. But sometimes we might have some past data. So here you see there's a guess of 21%, 3.3, 10. Okay. Certainty. Okay, this is the key column. This is the most important column. This is like, okay, how sure we are. And we have our little method of calculating certainty, which is, um, which is evolving. It's showing a lot of promise. And certainty is measured in this way, okay? Let me just move to the right. It's accumulation of evidence-based certainty. So evidence certainty is from gathered from tests. Uh, it could be gathered from research. So um, if we do, if we have any sort of, kind of supporting qualitative uh, customer surveys, someone has done interviews, maybe do a couple of phone calls with customer facing staff. Um, we would give ourselves points for that. Um, evidence is, yeah, it's again like test based. So if we have multiple, the more repeating tests we have, the higher this number um, is. And then we also have subjective certainty here. So here we have myself, someone else, and let's say John Smith, um, three people, okay? And we express certainty from either a negative three to a maximum of, of, of three, okay? And what this means is, okay, if I feel, this is, this is my column here, Jacob Lenowski, if I feel strongly that what it's worth is going to win, I put a three. Okay, if I put a two, I kind of less, I, th I think it's still going to win, um, but not as strong as a three. One is, yeah, maybe, maybe it'll win. Um, I could also, for, for particular ideas, I could say minus two, okay, which is my prediction of saying, it's, it's, it's me saying, okay, it's not going to win, it's, going, it's actually gonna hurt, all right? On top of this, we average these out with additional people. So let's say, and we do this because we think that more the more people get, get involved, there's gonna be a more accurate prediction. Let's say John Smith also believes it's a three. Notice it didn't do anything because I'm still a three. The average is, is, uh, is three. But if, if uh, let's say John here believes that this idea is a one, this actually becomes an average of two. And, and you might have noticed that this dropped by one. So let me just talk through the math here again. These get all these uh, values here and for each individual per person, they get averaged out. And then on top of that, these certainties from evidence and research get appended. Okay, so this is a maximum of three and these are extra, these values get added. So consider, you can imagine that if we have observed, let's say a very strong test recur 10 times, um, our certainty just might shoot through the roof here. And uh, essentially the, the, that's going to be a very strong signal for us to um, work on that test.
So repeat evidence is, is a key element here, okay? Um, here on the right-hand side, we have notes for where we're typically gathering this evidence or research from. Um, so here, as, as an example, uh, let me show you. Data stores is really the source of, of uh, where we do most of the analysis for um, for collecting evidence-based certainty. Let's say social counts. Okay, have this easy idea of showing um, of showing how many kind of people use this service underneath the call to action. And I referenced data story pattern seven. Okay, I'm just going to open up data stories and. Here we are, social counts. This is based on two tests, two insignificant tests. We calculate a certainty of 0.5 from essentially showing under underneath a download button, we actually show how many downloads there were so far, let's say, as an example. And this has a, we take this value here because there's some repeatability. We take 0.5 and we place it into here, okay? So we have some supporting evidence. It's not much, half a point I agree, like that, that's, that's weak, uh, but it starts calculating how much repeatability there is. And if you look at additional, additional patterns, uh, let's say, I don't know, natural language or top line forms, we have more tests, more tests in favor of, and the certainty actually grows higher. So if we were to do this as a test, uh, somewhere we would take a higher value of 1.25 and uh, that might, move that certainty count higher. All right, so that's that's essentially how we calculate, how we prioritize ideas. Um, when we want to see an update, because obviously these will change, there's an easy way in Google Docs to kind of sort Z to A, and then we have the highest certainty uh, ideas first. Uh, we might sort by other things as well. We might sort by effect. We might sort by, let's say John Smith is a really important person and he knows his stuff and he maybe he ran a million experiments and we respect John Smith. So we might also do this, see what John thinks about certain ideas. Um, we might also sort by, uh, by effort. Maybe you wanna see um, lowest ideas first, okay? Uh, okay, let me just scroll a little bit more to the right here. Okay, I think I didn't really show how John, how to short, sort John, so I'll do this again here, um, or Jacob or myself here, and uh, yeah, so then the, all the sort, all, all sorts of sorting uh, opportunities uh, appear depending on what kind of strategy you want to apply, and uh, yeah, this starts giving us a picture of uh, so, uh, has a subjective certainty, evidence-based certainty, and total certainty. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully, this was useful. Uh, I'll probably might be doing a course on this, a uh, dedicated course. So stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching again. Cheers.